Gary Owen Air. Gary Owen, also known as Gary Owen, Gary Owen, and Gary Owens, is an Irish tune for a jig dance. It was selected as a marching tune for Australian, British, Canadian, and American military formations, including General George Armstrong Custer's 7th Cavalry Regiment and Australia's 2 Cav Regiment. History The word Gary Owen is derived from Irish, the proper name Ian and the word for garden Garai, thus Ian's Garden, a church dating to the 12th century by the Knights Templar, dedicated to St. John the Baptist, is the source of the modern area of Gary Owen in the city of Limerick, Ireland. Owen's Garden, overlooking the River Shannon, was a fashionable retreat and recreational area for the citizens of Limerick. The song emerged during the late 18th century, when it was a drinking song of rich young roisterers in Limerick. An alternate title is Let Bacchus Sons Be Not Dismayed. Sung to the tune Old Bessie, it obtained immediate popularity in the British Army through the 5th or Royal Irish Regiment of Dragoons. It was published with additional lyrics in Thomas More's 1808 Irish Melodies. Beethoven composed two arrangements of the song during 1809-1810 published 1814-1816 in W. O. O. 152 and W. O. O. 154 with the title from Gario and My Happy Home, with lyrics by T. Toms on romantic themes. The arrangements were part of a large project by George Thompson to engage prominent composers of his time to write arrangements of the folk songs of Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. The composer Mauro Giulini arranged the tune in Ari Nazionale Irlandesi NR. 1 6 op. 125 6 Irish airs. The Bohemian composer Ignaz Moschel's 1794-1870 included the tune in his op. 89 Souvenirs de Ellerland, Recollections of Ireland, for solo piano and orchestra. British military units. A very early reference to the tune appears in the publication The Life of the Duke of Wellington by Joachim Hayward Stockweller, published during 1853. He describes the defense of the town of Tarifone during the Peninsular War, late December 1811. General H. Go, later Field Marshal Hugh Go, first Viscount Go, commanding officer of the 87th Regiment, later the Royal Irish Fusiliers, under attack by French grenadiers, drew his sword, past his scabbard. The troops responded with the Garryowen. It was used as a march by the 88th Regiment of Foot Connaught Rangers during the Peninsular War. Gary Owen was also a favorite during the Crimean War. The tune has also been associated with a number of British military units and is the authorized regimental march of the Irish Regiment of Canada. It was the regimental march of the Liverpool Irish British Army. It is the regimental march of the London Irish Rifles, now part of the London Regiment TA. It was also the regimental march of the 50th Queen's Own Foot until 1869. Gary Owen most recently was also the regimental quick march of the Ulster Defence Regiment CGS UDR. When the UDR merged with the Royal Irish Rangers during 1992 to become the Royal Irish Regiment, Gary Owen was replaced by Killalo. U.S. Military Units During early 1851, Irish citizens of New York City formed a militia regiment known locally as the 2nd Regiment of Irish Volunteers. The group selected Gary Owen as their official regimental marching song. On 12 October 1851, the regiment was accepted officially as part of the New York Militia and designated as 69th Infantry Regiment, New York Militia, the famed Fighting 69th. It is presently known officially as the 1st Battalion, 69th Infantry, and is part of the 42nd Infantry Division. The song is heard several times throughout the Warner Bros. movie The Fighting 69th 1940, starring James Cagney. Pat O'Brien and Alan Hale, S.R.
Seventh Cavalry. It later became the marching tune for the American Seventh Cavalry Regiment during the late 19th century. The tune was brought to the Seventh Cavalry by Brevet Colonel Miles W. Keogh and other officers with relations to the Fifth Royal Irish Lancers and the Papal Guard. The story goes, it was the last song played for Custer's men as they left General Terry's column at the Powder River. The Seventh Cavalry became a part of the First Cavalry Division during 1921. The word Gary Allen was used often during the Vietnam War by soldiers of First Cavalry as a password to identify each other. It became the official tune of the division during 1981. The name of the tune has become a part of the regiment. The words Gary Owen are part of the regimental crest. The tune became the name for bases established by the cavalry in current conflicts. The most recent was Contingency Operating Station, Kos Garyawan in the Mason province of Iraq. FOB Garyawan was established in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom 810 in June 2008 by 2nd Battalion, 7th Cavalry Regiment. There is a Camp Garyawan north of Seoul, Korea, which houses part of the 4th Squadron of the 1st Cavalry Regiment. Theodore Roosevelt considered it the greatest fighting tune in the world. In popular culture, In They Died With Their Boots on 1941, featuring Errol Flynn, the tune was played on a number of occasions during the movie. In both Fort Apache and She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, the song is sung by the cavalry troopers and is used as part of the score. In The Long Gray Line, 1956, Starring Tyrone Power, band company played it on the parade grounds at West Point, and its melody was integrated throughout the score as a love theme between the main character, Marty Matter, and his wife-to-be, Mary O'Donnell. In John Ford's The Searchers, 1956, it is played when the 7th Cavalry Detachment appears partway through the film. Little Big Man, 1970 starring Dustin Hoffman, incorporated a fife instrumental version, played several times, including as ironically as sprightly background music, as the 7th Cavalry attacks the Cheyenne. The air is whistled by Richard Dreyfuss' character in Always 1989. In Son of the Morning Star 1992, starring Gary Cole as George Armstrong Custer, Custer's regiment whistles it whilst on the march, and it is played by a practicing band. The song is played in gangs of New York at an American nativist society celebration. The first verse and chorus is sung by Indiana Jones, and the American pilots on the way to Paris in Chapter 12, Attack of the Hawkmen of the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. In the movie Rough Riders 1997, Ilan O'Bron, the wife of director John Milius, accompanied by a military band, sings the song to the Rough Riders as they depart San Antonio, Texas by rail on their way to Tampa, Florida. A Native American version appears in the soundtrack of the film, Smoke Signals 1998. The forces of Sky use the song in Victor Milan's Metroir novel Flight of the Falcon. It is also sung with slightly different lyrics. The song is featured in the movie We Were Soldiers 2002, which dramatizes the 1965 battle in Vietnam's Aya Drang Valley. Robert Emmett Dunlap set new lyrics to the melody for his song, Mick Ryan's Lament 1983, a fictional story about two Irish brothers who emigrate to America, one to die in the Civil War, the second at the Battle of Little Bighorn. Several people have recorded Mick Ryan's lament, including the American acoustic musician Tim O'Brien, on his CD Two Journeys 2001. In Italy, tune is known as Ira Meglio Morire da Piccoli. We'd rather have died as children. This Italian variation is limited to the verse tune of Gary Allen omitting the chorus, and it has several different sets of traditional lyrics, all starting with the title line, including some body ones. 
The space above and beyond episode Pearly features a tank driver named Sergeant Fox identified as being from the 7th Cavalry, who sings Gary Allen in battle at the beginning of the episode. Proper name of Slim Pickens Louis Burton Lindley, junior character in the Cheyenne episode Big Ghost Basin. In James Joyce's Ulysses, the citizen's dog in the Cyclops episode at Kieran's Pub was named Gary Allen. The final third movement of D.W. Sweet, Lindsay Buckingham's 1984 tribute to the Beach Boys Dennis Wilson, featured the Gary Allen chorus repeated in accelerando to close out the piece. The tune is used briefly in the 1938 Disney musical cartoon Farmyard Symphony in the scene with the marching ganders.